It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eaten Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby! It is the Fantasy Feast Eaten Podcast presented by DraftKings. I'm Ross Tucker. He's Joe Dolan. It's the show that's so nice. We do it twice. Episode one is always the Thursday nighter and the Sunday one o'clock games. Episode two, that's always the Sunday late game, Sunday night or Monday night. We break it up a little bit more digestible than being well over an hour on just one episode. Check us out on social at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod, at FG underscore Dolan. Love some of the informational nuggets that joe drops fantasypoints.com code 21 feast is where it's at what about where it's at for the patriots and the chargers joe well the chargers have been a team that um has really been struggled to defend the ground game and i think that's where everything starts with the new england patriots this week and you know i don't think i'm breaking any news to you i mean damian harris has looked phenomenal the last couple of weeks Ramondre stevenson with a was a healthy scratch last week um ivan fears the running backs coach said it's because of protection issues but i think Dame, the patriots are going to try to go out here with damian harris and i think they're going to try to run the football i don't think again i'm not breaking any news to you um the problem for the Patriots is who's catching passes for them. I mean, Jacoby Myers is still their best option, I think. But, I mean, they're mixing the ball around. Kendrick Bourne's coming alive. Uh, Nelson Aguilar scored on a touchdown pass from Kendrick Bourne. Poor poor uh, Jacoby Myers still hasn't scored a touchdown. Hunter Henry in a revenge game. He's somebody who's interesting this week because Johnny Smith left last week with a shoulder injury. So if you're looking at those Patriot pass catchers, I think Jacoby Myers and I think Hunter Henry are the most interesting. But in the backfield, um, if you think they're going to be playing from behind, I know you can laugh all you want, but I had to start Brandon Bolden in a league last week and the guy got me like 20 fantasy points. If you think they're going to be playing from behind, Brandon Bolden's going to be the passing down guy, but Damian Harris is going to get the early down work against a run defense that has struggled this year. Let's talk Chargers. So I think this is a potential big game for Keenan Allen. And I know we've been saying that for like a number of weeks here. He hasn't, he's one of those guys who's kind of disappointed, but is still getting it done somewhat, but he hasn't been what you paid for. But Jonathan Jones, the predominant slot corner for the Patriots is out for the season. He has a shoulder injury. I think this is a potential big game for Keenan Allen. Again, who are you like? You're not benching Keenan Allen. You're not benching Mike Williams. Keep an eye on his status, though, because he was clearly limited before the bye, playing under 40% of the snaps in that game with the knee injury. You're playing Austin Eckler. You're playing Justin Herbert. The other guy you can make a decision on is Jared Cook, but this is a pretty good matchup for Jared Cook if you need a tight end this week. I just think this could be finally the Keenan Allen game we've been waiting for. Really looking forward to hearing what you have to say about the Jags and the Seahawks. But for you? wise is the number one free app for football picks, odds, and analysis. Find expert picks for every game all season long. Loaded with best bets, props, and parlays, you can find in-depth game predictions, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction, all for free. Found your pick? Search our latest DraftKings promotions to sign up for an account and place your bet. Download the free PicksWise app now to make your next bet better. PicksWise backs responsible gambling. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Jag Seahawks. Joe. So, DK Metcalf scores an 84-yard touchdown on what? Like the third play from scrimmage? Catches one more game, one more pass. The Seahawks are a disaster right now. Um, fortunately, it's a good matchup for Geno Smith, but... I don't even know how you feel good about playing Tyler Lockett with the with the production he's had. He's obviously been banged up um, as well. Freddie Swain out targets and out games. As a matter of fact, Freddie Swain out targeted DK Metcalf in that game against uh, against the Saints on 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 Monday night. Uh, uh, the Seahawks are they're going to want to run the football. Uh, Pete Carroll's taken a lot of heat, but Pete Carroll has given you. 12 years to show you he's not changing his stripes. They're going to run the ball, whether it's Alex Collins, whether it's Chris Carson, whether it's Rashad Penny, whether they re-sign Marshawn Lynch, whether they sign John L. Williams. It doesn't matter who what who the Seahawks have there in the backfield. They're going to run the ball. I think Chris Warren 
gave him a call this past week. Um, they're going to run the football. And it's hurting DK Metcalf. What's hurting DK Metcalf and what's hurting Tyler Lockett is the fact that Geno Smith's the quarterback right now. But this is a disaster. It's a great matchup if you have DK. You have to keep playing them. But um, just uh, what a disaster. I the, the Seahawks are disgusting right now. So what about, Joe, um, on the other side, the Jaguars off the bye with no DJ Chark. He's done for the year. Yeah, and I mean, I think it probably – it's both a testament to how talented this young man is and an example of how decrepit the roster is. That Urban Meyer called Jamal Agnew, the converted defensive back, the Jaguars' best separator at wide receiver. That's what he said this week. Um, it doesn't exactly – warm my cockles when, with, with regards to uh, LaVisca Chenault, who's been a fantasy disappointment. Um, if I'm playing a ja- I, by the way, I think Trevor Lawrence in this matchup has an opportunity to put up some numbers. Trevor Lawrence is just thrown to whoever's open, whether that be Dan Arnold, whether it be Agnew, whether it be Marvin Jones. Um, I think Jones and Agnew are the two best options at wide receiver here, believe it or not. You're obviously playing James Robinson. Dan Arnold is a solid tight end streamer, um, especially now that that he's had the bye to get even more acclimated in the offense. And I kind of like Lawrence this week. I actually like more guys from the Jaguars than I like from the Seahawks. Interesting. Okay. I can see that, Mm -hmm. Uh, especially with Geno, a quarterback. What about Washington at Denver? The team moved the ball up and down the field last week. They really did. On the Packers and just couldn't score. They outgained them 430 to 304 in that game. You know, they had the, the the problems in the red zone and Heineke giving himself up at the goal line. And, you know, you had Terry McLaurin dropping a touchdown pass and uh, all kinds of issues here. I will, I will say this. This is projected to be a close game. Denver just got eaten alive on the ground by Dearness Johnson. Two weeks ago, Denver got gave up quite a bit of production to Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. Three weeks ago against Pittsburgh, Najee Harris went absolutely nuts on the Denver Broncos running for 122 yards. You know, Von Miller's banged up. This is a run defense with the Denver Broncos that is not very good right now. It is not a good run defense right now. So if Antonio Gibson doesn't get it done on the ground this week, I don't know when it's going to happen. He's obviously banged up. The injury has obviously limited bl- both his floor and his ceiling. I understand that, but you would have to think this is a good week for Antonio Gibson. And when it comes to Washington, the other, they're in that, another team where there's not really a whole lot of options for you. Ricky Seals-Jones has been essentially playing the Logan Thomas role for as long as Logan Thomas has been out, so I think he's an option. I think Terry McLaurin, obviously, you have to play. And J.D. McKissick, if you need a flex, you just hope they're playing from behind and he gets an opportunity like last week where he had six targets. I actually thought he'd get more in that game, but he got six targets against the Packers. But if I don't see it from Antonio Gibson this week, I wonder when we're going to see it from him. Let's get to the Broncos on the other side. The Broncos traded for Kenny Young. They traded for Steve. Like, they're not throwing in the towel on this season at all. Well, I think Vic Fangio is like – I like, well, I mean, I don't know how much say he has over personnel matters, but this is a team that started 3-0 and and is now 3-4. and four. Uh, Vic Fangio is probably on the hot seat. You just lost to a team that's built on the run game that didn't have its two expensive running backs, nor did it have its starting quarterback, and you just lost to that team. So Vic Fangio is, is, is on the hot seat. You've got to beat Washington this week. Um, Jerry Judy is expected to be back. That is huge for the Broncos. Um, I think he'll play in the slot. That Washington secondary is really banged up. Heading into last week against the Packers, they had only two corners on the entire roster who had even taken a snap this year, who wasn't who wasn't out uh, with an injury. William Jackson was out last week. So Teddy Bridgewater should have an opportunity to throw the ball here um, against, the, against Washington. And the backfield remains the same. Jamal Williams and Melvin Gordon, neither guy's pulling away. Another guy's fading away. It's a 50-50 split in that backfield. But Sutton, Noah Fant, Jerry Judy, that's a pretty good top three combination there at the wide receiver uh, at the receiving positions. And I think Denver um is needs to be able to throw the football in this game against Washington. If Denver doesn't win this game, oh boy, it's gonna be rough for Vic Fangio. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing them with Judy back in the lineup. 
Um, and I, I just like seeing things this time of year, period. That's why I love AutoZone Visibility Week. From November 1st to November 7th, that's next week, exclusive deals, all related to you being able to see as well as possible when you're driving. $10 bonus reward when you buy two Rain-X Quantum Wiper Blades. By the way, you get a $5 bonus reward just for joining the AutoZone Rewards program. Then you get the $25 bonus reward when you buy a Sylvania LED Fog Twin Pack. Look, if you live in the Northeast or New England or the Midwest, or you know what's coming. Get ahead of the game. You listen to this show to get ahead of the game for fantasy football this weekend. Go ahead and go to your nearest AutoZone or head to AutoZone.com to start your job today. Get in the zone. AutoZone. All right. Bucks and Saints, Joe. Um, the Saints defense has had Tom Brady's number um, uh, over the last couple of years, and obviously it's a Jameis revenge game. But I don't know if you listened to the Manning cast on Monday Night Football, Ross. Um, Drew Brees was essentially saying, you know, like in not so many words, uh, Jameis Winston stinks, and uh, like this offense is terrible. The Saint, uh, I maybe this maybe the Saints are able to sloppy this up and make it close, but this offense is a one man gang. It's Alvin Kamara. I mean that that's literally it. Like who else? Who else are you playing here with any sort of confidence? It's it's a waste of time to even talk about him. It's Kamara, and I think he gets a hundred targets in this game. That's that's the way it is. Flipping over to the Bucks, Antonio Brown is on crutches, so. I mean, it doesn't look like he's going to play. Mike Evans has had problems with Lattimore in the past. Could be a big Chris Godwin game. Um, could be a Leonard Fournette game. I actually think the Saints have the ability to make this game kind of ugly, um, which is their only chance to win this game because the Saints aren't going to be able to score on the Bucs. Um, Alvin Kamara in the passing game is going to be the situation for um, the Saints. I think it's going to be Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, obviously, but mostly Godwin in this game for the Buccaneers. And the Saints have to hope they can pull out a 20-17 to 17 win. This has a chance to be a really ugly game. Let's get to a game I think will be the opposite. Yes. A lot of good uh, fantasy points in this one. It's Sunday night football. The Vikings hosting the Cowboys. Both teams coming off the bye. Uh, so uh, if you were disgusted by the primetime games we had in week seven you had the browns and the broncos at 17 14 you had the colts and the 49ers 30 to 18 in a monsoon you had the saints and the seahawks at 13 to 10 in sloppy weather you're getting the opposite in week eight the, the, the three primetime games packers cardinals cowboys vikings and giants chiefs had the three highest line totals of the week so these are expected to be the big fantasy games and uh, i don't even know what the insight is to say here i mean the cowboys and the vikings i think this could be a zeke game minnesota struggled on the ground a little bit this year um D dak prescott is coming off of a calf injury so maybe the cowboys want dak prescott dropping back a little less that being said could get Michael Gallup back this week. So that throws another wrench into, you know, CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper, who have been good this year, but mostly in games where they've gotten a lot of volume. And that game against the Pack, uh, the, the Patriots in week six before the bye exploded for volume in the fourth quarter and overtime for those guys. Um, Gallup coming back throws a wrench in that. But I do have a, just a, a, a feeling that this could be a, a, a Zeke game, even though the Vikings are down Patrick Peterson, who's on IR with a hamstring injury. What about for the Vikings on the other side? You like narrow teams. Uh, the Vikings are the narrowest of the narrow. They're awesome. Dalvin Cook proved in week six um, that even though Alexander Madison had looked great, he is a backup. Dalvin Cook was out there, and Dalvin Cook touches the ball 31 times. Alexander Madison touches it three times against the Panthers in that wild game. Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, great options as always. Maybe you can go to K.J. Osborne if you're desperate. There's probably somebody better out there. It's a good matchup for the tight ends here. Tyler Conklin had three catches for 71 yards uh, in his last game. Uh, I think he's a viable streamer, but ultimately, you know what the Minnesota Vikings are, and I think you can fire Kirk Cousins up out there against the Dallas Cowboys this week as well. Should be a lot of points in this one. A lot of points. Uh, speaking of a lot, how about Visa? 
How about the way they support small businesses like fantasypoints.com where you use the code 21FEAST? Listen, overcoming the odds, rewriting the playbook, delivering under pressure, the MVPs of small business lead their teams to victory all year long. Visa is proud to provide playmakers everywhere with more tools to help grow their business and help them achieve even greater success. Because the more people we can empower, the more we all win. Visa, it's a network working for everyone. Joe. Monday night football, QB1, wide receiver one, RB1, Daniel Jones against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, Daniel Jones out there making diving catches. I mean, the good news is here, this is uh, we're recording this on Wednesday, and this is mon- the Monday game, so the, the Giants don't even have to release an injury report until Thursday. Um uh, according to Jordan Renan, who covers uh, the Giants for ESPN, NFL Nation, um, Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard, Kenny Galladay, and Kadarius Toney, all on Wednesday, which is not an official practice day for the Giants, are working on the field with trainers, which is a good sign. That at least gives them a chance to play this week. Obviously, before we make any definitive calls on the Giants in this glorious matchup, we need to see who's going to be available on Monday night. And unfortunately, you know, if somebody like a Kenny Galladay or Kadarius Tony is a game time decision, you might not have the luxury of putting them in your lineups here in this glorious matchup because the game is on Monday night. So that is something that we must monitor going forward when it comes to Barkley and these guys. Uh, if any of them are in the fold, I like Daniel Jones as a streamer this week. But, Ross, I, I hate to say it, but at, when we're recording, there's not enough information to really make a definitive call one way or the other, other than to say, you know, if Joe Judge were to come out on Thursday and say, you know what, I think Galladay's good to go, other than telling you this is a really good matchup for the Giants offense. All right, so what about the Chiefs on the other side? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see about Patrick Mahomes. It appears he's going to play. He cleared the concussion protocol. Um the problem is Tyreek Hill's banged up. Travis Kelsey's banged up. The offensive line is atrocious. Greg Cosell has been saying that uh, the RPO game is essentially breaking Mahomes. Mahomes is doing some Wentz 2020 stuff out there, just throwing the ball up, running around. It does not look good for the Kansas City Chiefs right now. What do you do? You play Tyreek Hill. You play Travis Kelsey. You play Mahomes. You play Darrell Williams in the backfield. And you hope beyond hope that the Kansas City Chiefs look like the Kansas City Chiefs, and not whatever it was last week against the Tennessee Titans. The Giants are a worse team than the Titans, but keep in mind the Titans have been struggling defensively this year, and they got after Mahomes, and they got after him aggressively. The vibes are bad in Kansas City right now. It's a really good point. It's why I don't really understand the betting line, and we talked about that on the Even Money podcast. What I do understand is that, as you can tell, Joe Dolan is a treasure trove of fantasy information. That's the whole group, the whole crew at FantasyPoints.com. It is insane how much fantasy information you get for what you're paying. Insane. If you haven't already, go there. FantasyPoints.com. Use the code 21FEAST. Now I'm stuffed and totally full. We're done. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 